we are passionate about data because data is now the driver for innovation in the global economy. Data is the new gold. That's sort of the cliche has been heard now. And those who can manage data will be able to innovate into the future. But what we're seeing is a problem is that many organizations cannot manage the data. So it's getting into the hands of very few. So our mission is to be able to develop technologies that give each and every individual up to an organization the ability to manage all their data forever. And what, the way we do that is, first of all, we recognize one of the biggest problems is that the way we store data today is not sustainable. These big open racks take up uh, lots of energy, the way uh, quite a bit, and they um, are very noisy, so we need to have special housing equipment. So what we did is we addressed all those issues. We made them quite small, we reduced the power consumption by 80%, and then we made them very quiet. So now you can build a data center in any sort of room, office environment, and uh, you can manage your data in a very low cost, low footprint way, low carbon footprint way. The value proposition to the customer is that, first of all, we decrease their cost. And we decrease the cost by decreasing their space requirement and their energy requirement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the customers that we have in mind for the beachhead market are typically the ones who are storing hundreds of petabytes of data. And this will be institutions like hospitals who are, are now experiencing this wave of precision medicine data, as wearables, imaging, genomics. Mm -hmm. And, but they're also the, the organizations that cannot really expand their data centers, have sort of the, not the skill sets or, the, or the, the, the financial wherewithal to actually manage this massive data growth. So for them, we're targeting initially this product to be able to say, now you can reduce your, the footprint for your data. And um, the next uh, market, of course, is any kind of data center around the world. There are 8.6 million data centers in the world that can use our technology. So that'll be the next phase that we sort of address, try to address. The decision makers, it's going to be different people in different organizations. If you look at a hospital situation, if it's a public hospital, you're gonna have a procurement process, you're gonna have some sort of decision making that goes forward. But ultimately, I think that we have found that the people that are responsible for IT have to have a big say in it because they're the ones that are building the infrastructure and the support system. Uh, so you have to have the people that understand the use of it and the people that understand the infrastructure of it. My background is in genomics. Uh, I studied at Harvard Med School and also at MIT, uh, implementing genomic technologies. And I joined Novartis Pharmaceuticals to then to help them implement precision medicine and drug discovery technologies. And, um, I became very passionate when I saw the um, impact of genomics and also what it can reveal about an individual. And I started looking for a solution that will allow people, allow hospitals in particular to manage the data, but also preserve the privacy of individuals whose genome is being sequenced. So I come from public sector and nonprofit finance. I'm a finance professional. And um, what I think I bring to the table is my passion for the combination of building a fiscal plan and the sustainability element of this project, of this company. Um, in my past, I worked for a city in the United States where we were innovative in creating something called the sustainability framework, and we redid the way that we did budgets so that every budget item had to tie to how we were trying to attain, attain our sustainability goals. And so I'm very interested in that, and I was very involved in that. And so from that perspective, I'm coming to the table here, not just to build the finances, but to make sure that we achieve what we want to In, through that process. For sustainability. In fact, everyone's really passionate, so mm -hmm. we're really quite blessed to have a great team. Uh, Doug Fortune is our CTO, and he has 30 years of experience in building these hardware systems and tinkering in this sort of small, reducing size, reducing power, and the application just became now really relevant. So he's a key driver in the team. Uh, Alicia is, uh, has trained in astrophysics, and she is bringing also this application to uh, this massive data growth that's happening, which is astronomy data. And Bejal is a communications expert, and she's also joined our team to help spread the message, get the, the word out. And then we're also, of course, hiring lots of individuals who've, who've already expressed interest, but also are experts in their own right. People who can develop hardware, software, 
and then uh, sales and marketing in high tech. Well, first of all, let me start. I think we're really excited about yeah. this um, because we, the EMBAs we feel are the ones who are really um, experts already. They have lots of experience in the industry. And um, by we're, we're looking, first of all, that they will give us a, a fresh perspective and challenge us on our vision statements mm -hmm. and um, perhaps see new things that we hadn't seen. Of course, with their experience, they'd be able to sell to the Silicon Valley and be able to help us get new financing, perhaps, and attract investors. And probably also because of their expertise, they can we can look at new sort of sectors that might open up to us or to our product. So we're really excited about that. Yeah. Basically, because uh, many years ago, almost a decade ago, we saw this problem emerging when uh, genome sequencing became very popular in a sense, next generation genome sequencing. And the technology was just in the infancy, but uh, it had the power back then even to show mutations that were causing diseases. And if you could elucidate this mutation, you can always figure out what the precise medi med uh, medicine to give to that individual. And that was, um, you know, it was kind of uh, revolutionary thoughts back in then. But to implement this technology, you would have to have um, you know massive data storage and then the second realization hit us that, is that this is no longer your data. Your genome is not your data. Your genome is something you share with your children and your future great-great-great-grandchildren. Uh, and so if you reveal someone's genome data, maybe you also reveal something about them that might deny them services, like health insurance, jobs, schooling. And it's kind of like Gattaca, coming to life sort of thing. And so we imagined that about 10 years ago. We said we have to think differently about this data storage. And we wanted to find a way to now allow hospitals or any organization that's collecting this kind of data to manage it on premises and also do it securely.